Now, I mentioned earlier in the program that I was again, or am again, half of the soundbite roster today. And as the usual case, I have delayed playing those sound bites here until the final half hour. Let's start Friday afternoon. Mechanicsville, Virginia, Senator Cruz held a press conference before a campaign rally. And during the Q&A, he had a little back and forth with a female reporter. I just heard Rush Limbaugh criticizing Donald Trump for criticizing you. So what's your reaction? Listen, I love Rush Limbaugh. He is a powerful voice for freedom and conservative principles. And as it concerns Donald Trump, Donald Trump's a friend of mine. There are an awful lot of folks in the media that want to see a cage match between me and Donald Trump. I think the Washington establishment is desperate for that battle. I have no interest in giving them what they want. I just heard Rush Limbaugh criticizing Trump or criticizing you. What is your reaction? Boy, journalism so easy today. What do you think of what X said about you? Seems to be the number one question journalists ask these days. So same place, Mechanicsville, Virginia, Cruz and uh, another unidentified reporter had this exchange. The, the reporter said, at the time you said that you uh, you supported what you were pushing uh, because it would legalize the undocumented. This is the reporter trying to either nail Cruz down or clarify the argument he was having with Rubio over legalization of gang eight bill. That statement is false. Jeff Sessions and I both stood on the Senate floor, were assailed from all directions. I spent 30 minutes on the radio with Rush Limbaugh. During that half hour Rush Limbaugh interview, the phones on Capitol Hill erupted as people across this country lit up the phones and we turned the debate. Senator Jeff Sessions has come out publicly and said, Ted is telling the truth, Marco is not telling the truth. And Rush Limbaugh has come out publicly and said, Ted is telling the truth, Marco is not telling the truth. As John Adams famously said, facts are stubborn things. Well, now, no, wait a minute. Nobody's, I haven't accused anybody of lying here. I've just, all I've tried to do is properly characterize what, what the debate was. This is about the poison pill that either was or wasn't a poison pill. This was, this is, this is about, uh, essentially, there's a gang of eight, not a gang of nine. The gang of eight, Senator Rubio's in it, and the picture show him in it, and Cruz isn't. And so... Members of the Gang 8 are trying to make the case that Cruz at one point would have made it a Gang of 9 because he was for legalization but not for citizenship. And mixing definitions and so, so forth, some are trying to say, well, hell, there's no difference in the two. If you're for legalization, you're for amnesty and all that, and they're trying to trip Cruz up. I was just recapturing the argument as it went back and forth and trying to translate it for people. Anyway, Ted Cruz was on Greta on Friday night on the Fox News channel. She said, why in the days and weeks and months after June 4th, 2013, did it never come up that what you were doing, your amendment, was a poison pill? It came up over and over and over again. Chuck Schumer's publicly said he knew it was a poison pill. In the last 24 hours, Senator Jeff Sessions has gone out publicly and said, Ted is right. And Marco's not telling the truth. And Rush Limbaugh has come out publicly and said, Ted is right. Marco's not telling the truth. So you see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what, no commentary needed here. I'm just playing you the sound bites, half of which I star in today. CNN State of the Union, Jake Tapper, spoke with Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader, about my criticism of Republicans over the passage of the budget. Rush Limbaugh said, quote, it's as though Pelosi is still running the House and Harry Reid is still running the Senate. I'm guessing you disagree with these assessments. We can't do things, one party only, in a time of divided government. But there were other important things done in the context of that overall bill. For example, we got rid of a 40-year-old relic of the past called the oil export ban. So it was a big compromise. That's what you have to do when you have divided government. Well, there you have it, uh, folks. Now, this is this. It fits. I mean, this is they're, if, if, if they're doing one thing, they're staying focused on the tune they're singing. Remember, when all they had was the House. The Senate said, well, I'm sorry, we can't do anything here. 
We don't have the Senate. The House can pass all at once. We can't pass it over here, so it can never be sent to Obama. So voters, okay. So they gave the Senate to Republicans. They elected a majority of Republicans to the Senate. And therefore, they expected a lot of compromise legislation to go to be sent to Obama. They expected the Republican Party to take a stand. Expected the Republican Party to stand up and say no, even if Obama did veto it. And the Republicans said, hey, all Obama's going to do is veto it. There's no sense passing anything. He's just going to veto it. We don't have the White House. We got divided government. And if we got divided government, there's no way we can prevail on anything. We don't have the White House yet.